Hello. <laughs> it's the day after TF Nation. Well, for me anyway, because obviously this is the Monday after. And uh, boy, have I got a haul for you. <laughs> yes, um, obviously TF Nation, the first 2016, the first of TF Nation, the uh, successor to Auto Assembly, went a lot went over this weekend, and uh, obviously I went along. Um, I did. Um, so obviously I had some bots I wanted to sell and fortunately I was able to you know go in with one of the other sales stalls and uh, you know become a dealer and uh, I sold some stuff but I also bought a lot of stuff and uh, I want to try and get this haul video out as quickly as possible because uh, my hauls tend to be rather large and my haul videos I tend to ramble and rabbit on f along for ages about what I've bought and how I bought it and who I bought it from, blah de blah de blah. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. I've got a lot to get through and I don't want this video running out to like uh, half an hour, 45 minutes. Anyway, so I went to TF Nation with a, a very specific game plan of the bots I wanted to get and in fact... I had a list and as you can see from the black marks on the list I got a lot of what I set out to get and uh, it's thanks in part mainly to uh, Dave Knight of uh, Max and Me Love Toys store who was one of the guys I was uh, on the store with uh, he happened to have the majority of uh, the RID bots that I was after so I, I basically got everything I wanted off him in a job lot but anyway let's get started um, because I was um, had a dealer pass, in fact, obviously I had two passes. There you go. I had a weekend pass and a dealer's pass, and of course they had these um, these armband things that they you, know, you put on your armband with an anti-tamper collar on. That you know once they're on, you can't pull them off without cutting them off. But anyway, so I had two of those on. Um, it did offer me the opportunity to go into the dealer area outside of trading hours. So. Friday afternoon while they were setting up I was in there and I could walk around I could scope out all the other stalls suss out where all the stuff was that I wanted and uh, I even managed to get a bit of cheeky dealing in on the Friday afternoon and it was a uh, getting late uh, most people are fully set up and uh, uh, Max and me love toys is stall is opposite where the space bridge was and um, uh, I was looking on the space bridge and I spotted one bot and uh, I went over and asked about it and uh, the guy says oh, oh it's 40 quid and I thought right let's get started and uh, but uh, while I was over there I noticed a couple of things in their cases and uh, I broke my duck with uh, G1 quick switch so I picked him up then also in the uh, the case they had generations drift so been after him so picked him up as well but the main thing I wanted to get off the space bridge was this dude. Transformers RID, the original RID, Optimus Prime. Uh, I've decided I wanted to you know, buy into the old RID line a lot more because I've uh, seen the show again recently and uh, I wanted to get the majority of the, the cast members from the show and that was my that's what most of those lines down the left hand side of the page are and basically I got all but one of the figures that I was after so yeah picked him up and then Dave, Dave Knight of uh, Max and Meal of Toys um, said oh I've got a load of RID uh, bots which one are you after and I, and I showed him the list and I said well you know Toe line, for instance, I started off with toe line. He says, "Oh, I've got him." So he he digs a box out, has a rummage around, and starts pulling these figures out. So he pulls out toe line, skids, wedge, high tower, heavy load. And Grimlock, um, obviously, those guys form the uh, landfill combiner, and now I actually had the landfill combiner already, the yellow version, but I didn't like it because I wanted the the one in the screen colours. I managed to sell the yellow one, and so I sold one to buy one. So I've now got a screen accurate um, landfill. Then it was like, then he pulls out these guys, rail spike. Rapid run, 
a Midnight Express, the other Autobot combiner from RID, the uh, the Rail Racer team. And those guys, uh, I wanted to get those guys because the Gestalt looks pretty amazing, even if the individual bots are a bit uh, a bit shonky. But uh, yeah, um, wanted to get them. They do go for a, a bit of a premium online, especially uh, they usually see in box. They're in a set of three, and people are asking like 150 quid for them, and it's like, no, thank you. So yeah, he had them, uh, and I got those for was it 40 quid for the free? Um, same price for landfill. Uh, skids and tow line were a fiver each, and uh, it continues. Gas skunk, slapper, and night scream. So I've got the uh, the free uh, Predacon uh, stooges, shall we say? So I've got Skybite. So I've got the the whole group of the uh, the Septicons. I've got I've got Megatron as well, and one other guy I got Scourge. Yes, the big bad black truck. Uh, obviously, the repaint of Laser Optimus Prime. As after this guy, it's boxed, has all its accessories. It's used, but you know. It, it's all there and uh, he wanted 90 quid for him in fact well he wanted a bit more than that he wanted um i think it was was it 110 or you he's asking or just over 100 but anyway I, I looked at the lot and i said you know we worked out a deal and said 200 quid for the lot and i thought that's near enough so yep got all those and that was pretty much the uh the early stuff i got on the friday so Come Saturday morning, uh, there was a few things I'd seen walking around on the Friday, and uh, I was I was itching to get going. And uh, a bit late coming down to breakfast, uh, managed to get into the uh, dealer hall just after eight o'clock. Um, I was down at the uh, the stall first, and James and Dave turned up a bit later. And the uh, first couple of things I picked up was went over to uh, ID Toys, and I got Titans Return Ape Face and Clobber. These guys look pretty interesting, so uh, Titans Return. These are probably going to be the only Titan Masters I get, so yeah, pick them up. And of course, they're on this list as well. And then, now, this next figure. Uh, about a, just over a month ago, there was the uh, TF Con in Toronto, and there was uh, a couple of uh, convention exclusive figures, like there was the. Um, Ocular Max Sphinx, the invisible one. Um, James actually had a couple of those on his stall and he managed to uh, managed to sell them. But um, there was another figure that came out. It's a repaint of an existing Planet X figure. And I was hoping that um, somebody would have a couple of these for sale at under 100 quid. And as it happens, Kapow happened to have some. Planet X Hephaestus. Yes, the... Uh, the uh, Fire Blast red repaint of their uh, Vulcan or their uh, Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. When I've heard this thing was coming out, I just I want to get one of those. But yeah, there's people flogging them on eBay for like 130 odd quid, and uh, no, I wasn't prepared to pay that. But uh, Kapow was doing them for 90 pounds, and they only had a handful of them in stock, so I, I got in their early doors during the. Uh, the pre-dealing setup and uh, swooped in and picked that guy up. Then it was uh, back to the main, uh, the stall I was at, uh, Maximil of Toys, and James had a couple of figures on there that uh, I wanted to buy, and uh, a couple of Function X figures from Fans Project. Function X, X1 code, and X2 quadruple U. Now, quadruple U is uh, a figure that I'm after because I've decided I want to collect Weird Wolf as a character now. So uh, this is a uh, number two because I've got the convention exclusive one up on the shelf. And uh, so I managed to pick those guys up for uh, 50 quid a piece. And uh, one's used and the other one, as you can see, is still sealed, brand new. Then it was, obviously I was on the stall all day, um, mostly, uh, things started uh, going, uh, I managed to sell quite a bit on the Saturday, uh, made I think about 300 and something quid, sold a, a good, I would say, more than half of the stuff that I bought, 
and uh, throughout the day I, I'm, I was on the stall up pretty much all day um, didn't really leave it that much which was a bit of a shame um, I think I, I went to go to the um, well, well when I say went to go I mean the the third party panel was actually in the main hall so we just sort of walked around the corner and watched it um, but uh, as the day went on, uh, I added the odd wander around and uh, went to all the cool stuff. Um, because, well, what it was, I'd, I'd been reminded of uh, a figure that I'd um, seen at um, Rollout Roll Call on uh, Dave Tree Stall. And it was the Robot Masters uh, Beast Megatron. And uh, I went over and uh, picked him up. So it's the, the little mini version of... Um, Beast Wars and I wanted him because uh, I've got the big one. <laughs> I've also got uh, the Robot Masters um, Optimus Primal, the small one, so I mainly got him to go with that. 25 quid though, mm, a lot of money for something which is little more than a deluxe. Still he's uh, pretty cool and I think he makes a better robot than the big one. So yeah, picked him up. And then um, I've been searching around. As I said, I want to collect Weird Wolf. I was searching for a, a G1 Weird Wolf, but none of the stalls seemed to have, or have one. And it wasn't until like sort of very late in the afternoon, um, not I think it was about half past four or something like that. Um, there was another stall round the front where the uh, the seats were called uh, Beyond Technologies. It was just to the side of the uh, the PA booth, and uh, he had a, a bunch of. Um, G1 stuff and I went over and I was having a look in his cases and then I spotted a Weird Wolf and I asked him about it and he says well it's not um, it's not perfect he says uh, it's got some damage on the headmaster so but I didn't realise it came with two <laughs> it actually came with uh, two bodies and one sword one gun and one headmaster but the headmaster the arm well one of the arms had broken off and as I've you know, transformed this guy to put him on, the other arm fell off. So, as you can see, he's uh, got no arms. So, yeah. Bought these guys for 45 quid, the pair. Um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, obviously, uh, one of them's in slightly better nick than the other. I'm probably going to uh, you know, get a few bits, try to get the bits to fix the other one up and then maybe sell it. But, uh, yeah, so I've got all three of the currently available Weird Wolf moulds. So uh, that's mission accomplished on that front. So uh, that was pretty much all I bought on the Saturday. Like I said, it wasn't a particularly high scoring day. But uh, we move on to the Sunday and uh, <laughs> on the Sunday. Yes, uh, I took quite a lot of money. I sold quite a few bits on the Saturday and I'll just put the money in the box apart from when I went to get the weird wolves I uh, took 40 quid out of the box to go and grab them quickly but when I got back to the room I, I took the 40 quid out of my uh, Sunday cash um, allowance and put it back into the cash box so everything was squared away but uh, on the Sunday it was a case of uh, I spent <laughs> I was just taking money out of the box rather than putting it in I didn't have many sales on the Sunday uh, sold a handful of bits, uh, didn't really make a, a fat lot of money, and I was mostly, uh, you know, sticking my hand in the till and uh, <laughs> taking money out. I still had 200 quid of my original uh, cash allowance left for the Sunday, and 100 pound of that disappeared right away, first first thing in the morning, because um, when on the Friday I joined Dave and uh, James uh, setting up their stall. When James was putting out his stuff, he put something on on his uh, on his shelves that uh, I thought, oh, actually, I wouldn't mind that. And uh, I asked him about, inquired about the price, and he says, oh, I don't know, because it didn't have a price on it. And he said, I don't know about the price on that. So I had a quick scooch on eBay to show him the prices these things go for. And they, they go for uh, like 115, 130 quid. And uh, I said to him, I was definitely interested in it. And as the weekend wore on, I says, I'm definitely going to have that figure. And I, I said to him, I says, look, I'll give you 100 quid for it. And he was quite happy with that. And I'm pretty sure I've got the only one at TF Nation. Bulls Fire DB01 Airstrike, their masterpiece swoop. Now, I bought this purely as a novelty. 
and it's as far as I'm aware it's the one and only figure from Bullsfire because Bullsfire made this it didn't sell particularly well because the fans toys saw came out shortly afterwards and it's slightly bigger and it totally nails the G1 aesthetic and this thing kind of looked like a poor cousin by comparison and it didn't sell particularly well and I think Bulls Fire went under or, or whatever they, they disappeared without a trace and so this is the only figure they created and for that reason I wanted to get one and it, it, it's a nice enough look, looking figure in its own right so yeah I bought that and that's one of the you know, prized possessions of the weekend and uh, then now there's another figure that I saw at Rollout Roll Call on, on uh, Nick Snowden's uh, Phantasma toy store. I bought the Gladian from him at um, Rollout Roll Call and there was this other figure that he was uh, persuading me to buy but I, I didn't buy it at the time because uh, I, was, I was too busy buying uh, Titans Return stuff. But um, when I saw him on Friday, I said, oh, how much is that figure? And he says, well, is it at the same price it was at Rollout Roll Call? He says, no, it's, uh, it's a, which was 60 quid. He says, no, it's 120 quid now. I says, and I said, well, because obviously it's a bigger convention. There's more people going around with more money. You know, if somebody buys it 120, so be it. Come Sunday morning, Nick comes wandering around. Oh, by the way, that figure that you were after, it's down to 75 quid now if you're interested. So... With the uh, cash I had in my pocket from you know my Sunday spending allowance, I went and bought this guy. <laughs> Web Divers Dragon or Drag One. This guy, uh, he turns from a, like a futuristic truck into a huge great blue dragon and he's got possibly one of the biggest wingspans of any transforming toy that's ever been made. So he will go well with uh, Gladion and the other Web Diver characters I've got. So that was a score, and right, right. Then, uh, then I went over to um, Sid's Toys and Collectibles in the corner because there was again a figure that I'd seen on his stall at Rollout Roll Call, and he had it again at uh, TF Nation. TFCC Spinister, and uh, I've bought this because I've got the G1. There you go. You see, I've got the G1. And uh, so I wanted him because scavengers, baby. <laughs> He's one of the scavengers. And I just wanted a, a generations version of Spinister. And uh, so I picked him up for 50 quid off Sid. And while I was on Sid's store, of course, he had the convention exclusive figure that uh, Mr. Few Adams reviewed. Scorponator! So I picked up one of those. I mean, this, <laughs> this bio on the back is absolutely hilarious to read. There's all these uh, you know, song references on the back. It's absolutely brilliant. I haven't got him out yet. Still sealed, but I thought I'd be rude not to pick one of those up. And then uh, another figure that I'd seen throughout the weekend. Uh, now, some people might not go for this because the aesthetic on the robot mode is a bit odd. But it does transform from something that's as flat as a pancake. The MyPad Soundwave. Kapow had a bunch of these doing them for uh, 50 quid and I thought, yeah, I'll do that because the, the engineering on this thing looks really amazing. The bot mode's a bit a bit of an acquired taste, but uh, yeah, I thought I'll, uh, I'll give that a go. So pick one of them up. And I'll just check my list again. And uh, what that was from Kapow, and while I was on the Kapow stand, I remembered there was another figure that they had that I uh, wanted to buy. In fact, I wanted to pick one up at, again, roll out roll call, but uh, didn't get around to it. But they had a couple left on the Sunday morning. Jaguar. Ocular Maxi's Jaguar. And uh, I have sort of, you know, there you go. It comes in a, a proper cassette case, and uh, I haven't transformed it yet, but there it is. A lot of metal in this, it's got a hell of a weight. want to get the repro labels for this, because um, obviously the repro labels make this thing amazing. I mean, as you can see, in its standard form, it's, it's pretty bland and plain. It hasn't got all the, 
the tape design on it, but that's what the Repro labels fix. But you think the way this thing transforms, all the decals then end up on the inside of the figure, so it still looks like a, a black cat when you're finished. So this is one of those figures that is definitely enhanced by Repro labels, and uh, I'm probably going to be getting some of those at some point. Then um, I took a bunch of things to get signed, but because I was on the stall for the entire of Saturday, I, I never got around to um, to doing it, to getting the stuff signed. So on the Sunday afternoon, it was a little bit more relaxed because you know, I didn't really sell much and it, it was a lot quieter. And so I decided, right, now's my chance to go get some stuff signed. And when I went around, um, Simon Furman was... Uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the stage doing something, and uh, Nick Roche was was away from the table. I think he was in a panel, so I couldn't get those stuff signed by them. But you know, Jeff Senior was there, so I got some stuff signed by him, which you will see in my uh, post uh, my, my well my uh, TF Nation reflections video. I'll go into more detail about this. But uh, the reason I'm putting this down on my haul is because I actually paid money for it. And it was this, this uh, A3 signed print by Mr. Akimoto Hayato of Nicole. <laughs> I love Nicole. She's absolutely amazing. The sole surviving member of the DJD, and she was had enough sense to walk away from the Megatron fight. So did uh, Overlord. So they lived to fight another day. The rest of the DJD psh, dead. <laughs> Spoilers! But yeah, I think she's an amazing character. Um, he, he, obviously, he's a Japanese bloke and he doesn't speak much English, so had a girl alongside who was um, translating for him. But I, I'd love Nickel so much, and uh, I said to him, I, I, I'm hoping and praying that uh, Mastermind Creations, when they're finished doing the rest of the DJD figures, they're going to do a twin pack of uh, Nickel and the Pet. That would just set it off. But I, I want a toy of Nickel. And of course, uh, Smizno's girlfriend did the cosplayers uh, nickel for the uh, the cosplay show, and she won. <laughs> Fantastic! Unfortunately, I didn't get a photograph of it because by the time I got around to where she was, you know, she was starting to take her costume off. So I, I didn't get a picture of her in her amazing nickel costume, <laughs> complete with rollerblades. Fantastic! Absolutely amazing. So. Uh, Yep, love that. Obviously, I paid 10 quid for that, but I was quite happy to pay 10 quid for that. So that's why it's on my haul. And then, then I thought, well, T-shirt. Um, usually at a convention, I will buy a T-shirt, usually from um, Urban Species. But, you know, the couple of Transformers T-shirts I've bought before, they're always white, grey, or you know, it's kind of bland t-shirts and I wanted some that were a bit more colourful but they didn't have anything that took my fancy so I thought well let's get a convention t-shirt because last year I got the the, the last auto assembly t-shirt and this year I got the convention t-shirt there it is um, when I went up to the store, it was sort of midway through the Sunday afternoon. I was a bit worried that they'd, because obviously this is a large one, I was a bit worried that they would have sold out the large one. But I went over and asked at the table, and they they, they still had a couple left. So I dashed back to the, uh, the cash box, put my hand in the cash box again, and went and bought me a T-shirt. Uh, later on, Dave decided he wanted to get one, but unfortunately he missed the boat, because when he went back to the, uh, the stand to get one, they'd sold out. So unfortunately he missed out. And right now, there were some amazing deals at TF Nation this year. Certain things that were at uh, you know, lower prices than you would normally expect. Uh, like Kapow was doing the uh, you know, the, the the normal version of uh, Titans Return Fort Max for 120 quid, and uh, Space Bridge was doing him at a similar sort of price. But they were doing. Um, the uh, Ocular Max, you know, Perfection Series Backdraft, their, uh, you know, masterpiece, third-party masterpiece Inferno for, I think it was 65 quid they were doing it for. 
and I've been umming and ahhing about which I mean I'm I'm in the market for uh, a masterpiece scale Inferno because I I kind of like Inferno for something he did in the G1 comics, and I want to get him so I can get him and Smokescreen in, in a certain pose. <laughs> anyway. So uh, I was after one, and I couldn't make my mind up between the uh, Mackie toys or the, um, the Perfect Effects one. And it swings in roundabouts. I've, I've watched reviews of the two figures, and it depends on your personal taste. Uh, admittedly, I, uh, I was drawn to the Mackie toys one mainly because of the ladder. The ladder is absolutely huge and really long, and in vehicle mode, it's, it extends out to almost a meter. And yet, in uh, obviously in robot mode, it hangs down his back, but it, it did on the G1, so that's not too bad. So I, I, I like that about it. But then again, the Ocular Max 1 has got a lot going for it. And my decision was made for me on the Sunday afternoon when I, well, I was wandering around, looking at the Kapow store, and I saw that they had backdraft for £50. 50 quid! And they only had two left when I went round, so it was like, right, I'm having one. 50 quid. Rude not to. <laughs> what a deal. I mean, you can't give them away at that. So that was fantastic. Um, uh, then I went back to Kapow a little while later, because I noticed they were doing the uh, the Titans Return sticker sheets for a fiver. The old foil dec decals that you can put on your Titans Return figures, the Wave 1 figures, to make them you know, look a little bit more uh, G1 accurate. So I thought, yeah, I'll buy some of those. It'll, Because, I mean, let's face it, Hasbro don't do much in the way of stickers and paint apps on their figures these days. They're pretty bland, aren't they? So anything that can spice them up a little bit, I'm all for it. Especially if it's, you know, five quid. Rude not to. And uh, then sort of... Things was wind, winding down then. I, I was thinking, right, I've spent enough now. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I've, I, I've got most of, you know, as you saw um, my list, you know, I got most of the stuff that I, I was after. And I was looking, um, there was a, we were backed onto another stall. We had a Zyber Toys that was just to the left of us and obviously it had the back of their, their shelving and I could, you know, sort of peer through and, and see a couple of figures and I noticed something and I walked round and I thought oh now if you've seen some of my videos in the past you'll know I'll keep harking on about the old gang which was a bunch of bots that I had when I was a kid and in that I had this guy and uh, I have massive fond memories of this this toy I used to play with this when I was a kid and, and it was one of my go-to bots in my Transformers collection um, it was the uh, the Henshin Robo by Gakken, which is based on the uh, the Mospeda Legios AF01 uh, fighter, which is uh, an offshoot of uh, Robotech. And uh, so they had that. And Zyber Toys, they only had the bigger version. <laughs> yeah, so basically, this is a bigger version of that. It's got die cast metal on it. It's about twice the size of this. Fully articulated, painted, the whole nine yards. But they actually do an even bigger one than this. I mean, th this figure, you could get it in about four or five different scales. So yeah, uh, 55 quid. And he had uh, all three versions. He had the, the blue one, the green one, and the red one. Of course, I wanted the red one because, you know, my one was red. So yeah quite pleased to pick that up and wasn't expecting to find this but and then it like really was that's it no more no more you know shut the box have your fingers off and uh, <coughs> and it, it really slowed down then it was getting on for five o'clock um, people were starting to to pack things up and I looked across to the space bridge and I walked across and they had that glass case with those uh, those mint in box uh, G1 figures with the uh, the um, the original Woolworths like 399 price tags on them <laughs> and they had a misfire in there and I asked him oh, how much is that miss that uh, that mint in box misfire he says oh it's 400 quid and I thought yeah okay yeah <laughs> I want one but I don't want one that much 
And then I looked into the case and I saw a figure and I thought, oh, he's got one of those. So I made in inquiries about it and, he, and then he turns around and picks a brand new one off, off the shelf. This is the last bot I bought. It's the uh, Transformers The Ride exclusive figure you can get from, you can only get from uh, the shop at Universal Studios in Orlando of EVAC. And uh, obviously he transforms into this vehicle which is actually the car they use on the ride and you know you're basically riding inside evac round the, round the ride so they did a transfer especially commissioned a transforming toy this thing looks incredible uh, it looks amazing the detail on it I love these sort of scaffoldy bits on his legs they look fantastic I mean the aesthetic on this thing is amazing it's got 17 transformation steps so yeah, I'm really looking to looking to uh, looking forward to busting into this guy, uh, and uh, yeah, so that is my haul, and that is everything that I bought, and I took 750 quid with me to spend. Uh, I had 50 quid as a cash float in the cash box, so 800 quid, and I took 50 quid as um, money for you know drinks and food. Over the course of the weekend, um, I spent my main cash allowance, um, and it wasn't until the Sunday that I started, you know, dipping into my takings from the Saturday to, you know, buy more stuff. But over the course of the weekend, I mean, well, the totals, obviously, uh, I've got my list in front of me. So on the Friday, it was uh, 16 purchases, and I paid £295 for those. On the Saturday, I only did eight purchases, but still spent 270 quid. But it was the Sunday when I went a, went a bit mad. Uh, 12 purchases, 520 quid. <laughs> so all in all, uh, another grand busting haul, uh, 1,085 quid. Is that is that more than I spent last year? I can't remember off the top of my head. I know I spent over a grand last year, but anyway, <laughs> that's how much I spent. And as you can see, I got quite a lot of cool stuff. So I'm very happy. Like I said, you know, I got most of the stuff on my list. I'm made up. <laughs> so now I've got to, I've got to slow down. <laughs> no more buying bots, at least until September the first, when it starts all over again. And uh, I've already got a few bits on eBay. I'm uh, thinking, right, want one of those, want one of those. So, yeah, it's, uh, that's it. That's my haul. And hopefully this is the first haul video from TF Nation that's uh, been put out there. Um, looking forward to seeing other people's uh, TF Nation videos. Um, I had a, had a great time. It was a great convention. Easily on par with auto assembly as far as I was concerned. Except... No disrespects to the organisers of Auto Assembly. I think TF Nation was a little bit more professional about the way they went about things, um, especially in the run-up to the convention. You know, all those updates they was doing on the mobile phone and that. Fantastic job. And uh, I will do another video in the next couple of days where I will go on about my uh, experiences at TF Nation. But for now, I am TFR Wilderness. This has been my haul, and I will see you all next time. Ta-da.